While most of us know that NASCAR is America's most popular motorsport today, there was a time that the sport was also a worldwide destination for all drivers as well. Not only did stock car hopefuls want to make it to the upper reaches of NASCAR, but in the mid-2000s, even open-wheel drivers wanted in. Many saw the influx of new drivers like this to be a great boom for the sport. And while there was good, there was also some unforeseen bad with it as well. But we'll get into that in a little bit. While some, like Tony Stewart and John Andretti, had come from open-wheel racing to NASCAR before, they are not a part of this due to being so far removed from the actual movement of drivers to come in from 2007 to about 2009. Some of the drivers who had short and fruitless stays in NASCAR were Patrick Carpentier, Dario Franchitti, Jacques Villeneuve, Scott Speed, and Max Pappas. Outside of these guys, there were others who sporadically jumped over as well, and a few who had minimal success. While Sam Hornish Jr. never won in the Cup Series, he did compete for championships in the Xfinity Series, as well as scoring five wins. AJ Allmendinger did manage to nab a win at Watkins Glen in 2014 as well, and it awarded him his first and only chase berth, which resulted in a 13th place points finish. But the most successful of the open wheel invaders was Juan Pablo Montoya. Montoya was the driver with the most hype in this movement to come over. He had won the Indy 500 in 2000, as well as seven F1 races, including the 2003 Grand Prix of Monaco, and he was the 1999 kart champion. So, if there was anyone who was going to succeed of these new drivers to come over, it would be Montoya. In his rookie season, Montoya broke through and won at Sonoma, and while he didn't do much more in 2008, 2009 was the year that he broke through and took it to the next level. Being a top 10 driver most of the season, once the chase began, Montoya was a true contender. In the first four races of the chase, Montoya was in the thick of the championship hunt. Third in points, only 58 out of the lead before fading to eighth in the final standings. While scoring another one in 2010, Montoya never recaptured his 2009 mojo and ran mediocre for the remainder of his NASCAR career. Most NASCAR fans unfortunately don't remember him for his 2009 success, but instead for this. Gordon, he was complaining about a bad vibration in every gear. No, I, Larry, he just slammed he into the jet dryer. I think he slammed into the jet dryer. They're trying to clear debris off the racetrack and the car brakes, won't steer, and he slides up the track and into the back of that surplus helicopter jet engine on a trailer used to dry the racetrack. Uh, Mike, I saw sparks coming out from the car as if it had a tire down or something. What an incredible turn of events. I've never, I've never in my life. Oh my gosh. And all that spilled jet fuel found something hot to ignite it. But what's the significance of the open wheel invasion today? A largely forgotten aspect that led into the second decade of this millennium for the sport that had ripples that are felt still to this day. For one thing, it disrupted the stream of drivers coming up to cup from the lower levels of NASCAR. And while this wouldn't usually hurt NASCAR too much, it was at the worst possible time that this happened as the economic crash of 2008 hit at the same time. These drivers brought sponsorship dollars that would be needed badly while the young drivers who could have had a chance didn't bring these dollars and were more of a risk for the teams. On top of this, the struggling teams that employed many of these guys like Bill Davis Racing, Everett Hand Motorsports, and Ganassi Racing all took huge risks that never paid off. It's no mistake that these teams either shut down or merged with other teams shortly after. And others like Penske ended up dropping their third team. This hurt the competition overall with less competitive cars on track. And overall, it was a small contribution to NASCAR's fall from grace. Outsiders saw these drivers give an immense fanfare only to flop like a fish when they began to compete in NASCAR. Diehards saw many of these as a nuisance, if they even saw them at all during the race. And to older fans who would watch the sport rapidly change over the years with the cars, points format, and even the entrance of a new manufacturer in Toyota, it only served as another reason to leave. The open wheel invasion didn't kill NASCAR by any means, not even close, but it did have an effect on what it has become today. 
and to you I pass it off to ask, what do you think that effect was? Let me know down in the comments below, and until next time, have a good one.